Bonjour. Good morning. My name is Pierre Gabriel Côté, Agent General for the Quebec Government Office in London. I am here today to introduce the meeting between the Quebec Minister of Economy and Innovation, Pierre Fitzgibbon, and Marc Deschamps, Executive Chairman from Drake Star Partners on Artificial Intelligence. AI is one of the fastest growing ecosystem in Quebec and is home of, to the father of deep learning, recipient of the Chewing Award and member of the Royal Society, Professor Yoshua Bengio. Drake Starr and the Quebec government in office in London enjoy a successful collaboration. Last November, we presented the Quebec Annual Lecture, where Elemente High took center stage at the Royal Institution in London. To our viewers, friends, future partners, please do not hesitate to get in touch with our London office. Mark, Minister Fitzgibbon, the floor is yours. Merci beaucoup, Pierre-Gabriel. Um, bonjour, welcome to today's interview. Uh, we're lucky to be joined today by Pierre Fitzgibbon, <coughs> Minister of the Economy and Innovation at, uh, and member of the National Assembly of Quebec in Canada. Bonjour, Monsieur le Ministre. Bonjour, Monsieur Deschamps. And uh, I'm Marc Deschamps, indeed, and, and managing partner at, um, and chairman at uh, Drake Star. And um, this interview forms part of our Global AI report, which is a research developed by our, our team uh, that looks to provide an update on the future of AI, and especially on these unprecedented uh, times, and the future of AI transactions, um, and M&A valuations, um, as they are forming that industry. Um, we've developed a focus uh, on AI at the country level, centered around the Global AI Index developed by Tortoise um, Intelligence. Um, this is a first of its kind, provides a macro measure of the AI development in the various countries internationally. Interestingly for us, Canada is ranked fourth in the index and was the first country to develop a national AI strategy. Very recognized, it's a great position and it's just behind Great Britain and following USA and China, of course. Okay, so the kick the interview, kick off the interview, um, may I ask, Mr. Minis, why has the government of Quebec and the government of Canada um, taken a particular interest in AI? Well, I think um, from a um, Quebec perspective, uh, just to put it in the context for those who may not be familiar, Quebec is the second largest uh, province of Canada. Uh, is comprised primarily of an SME market. We've got uh, 260,000 uh, corporations in um, Quebec, largely um, based on entrepreneurship. So I think the uh, the government felt that you know the um, the ecosystem we have <clears throat> was conducive to um, kind of promote um, and boost productivity. Uh, I think we've got. Um, I think, and, and this is initiated by the previous government that just been in office for two years and we were continuing in the same process. But basically, um, one of the characteristics of Quebec is that although we have a lot of SMEs, uh, we were probably underinvested in uh, productivity, namely robotization, automatization, and the whole digital world of a corporation. And clearly, under our government right now, we're putting a lot of effort to kind of fill that gap. So we all felt AI was clearly um, a tool to boost uh, productivity. Uh, this was also anchored on the fact that we have uh, recognized a talent pool, multicultural, there's a, there's a, there's a whole set of attractiveness that uh, uh, government felt in, in Canada and in Quebec that we could use to attract talent to complement what we have. So it's a, it's a combination, but I would say primarily it was a drive to boost productivity, anchored on what we felt were condition precedents that uh, existed 
on, on over which we wanted to build. And I think so far it's been done with a fair uh, high level of success, although a lot is to be done yet to kind of bridge what I call to bridge the AI fundamental research to the life of uh, corporates uh, in Quebec. Yes, it does seem that so far it's been working very well. And but what has have been those the most efficient policies um, employed by by your government in fostering this AI innovation? I would say that the it's to put the community of interest together. First, I think the uh, and thanks to the Canadian government through the Apogee program, which we did through the uh, University of Montreal with Ivado which is one of the fundamental research group, um, complemented by Dr. Yoshua Bangio that you, know, you mentioned earlier, uh, who was awarded a touring word, uh, to uh, McGill University and University of Montreal in deep learning and machine learning uh, that created MILA, that's a second institute. So a lot of public funding has been allocated to the, uh, the two concerns. Uh, they were also joined by what we call the Forum AI, which we have an umbrella group, which uh, makes sure is that we have synergies among these uh, fundamental research group, that we have not numerous uh, fundamental researchers, which got attracted by Banjo. Uh, we have also Hugo La Rochelle, Joël Pinot, Iron Corbe, we have other researchers beside Yeshua. So I think this, 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 this umbrella on the fundamental research was very important. Given the fact that Quebec is largely a startup environment, you know, entrepreneurs, that also fuel a lot of new entity. You mentioned uh, Monsieur Gagné from the and AI. There's numerous others. So I think we were able, and we are able, to get the um, the synergies between the startups, between the researchers in education, of course. And also, we have some corporate labs. Now, the, the big names of uh, the world, the Google, Samsung, Airbus, I mean, Thales, uh, in the aerospace, I mean, they all have kind of corporate labs. And we're able to create even a geographical ecosystem, what I would call an innovation zone. You know, it's called a MileX. It's, a, it's an acronym for um, it's part of the city of Montreal, which was uh, almost defunct in terms of activity got rejuvenated by having Mr. Bango there, some startups, corporate labs. So you can imagine if you're growing up from McGill University and you end up in a, an ecosystem where you have access to these uh, great researchers, you have access to the corporate labs of Google or Samsung. It's a very, very uh, interesting and stimulating. So I would say that that's been the, probably the condition precedent that uh, got, uh, uh, allowed us to fuel this, this momentum, which uh, we have uh, as we speak. Yeah, very interesting. And your link between the, the the various research organization, universities, and startups have they, have they fueled um, information to you, or how did you approach them um, to to create your policy and and um, define your policies? Well, one of the things that surprised me the most, uh, I come from. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call, qualify myself as, as someone technology savvy, but I, I, I've been working with technology. I was involved in, uh, as you were, I guess, uh, in, a, in the wireless world. I spent uh, seven years in the telecom industry, uh, touring the world. I was based in Asia. And at the time, I, I, would, I, would, I would see corporation keeping you know, the, 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 the close use of their technology. I'm amazed to see how open source or how open these new technologies are developing. And then to be, when I talk about Milex, which is the physical location, I've been there quite regularly because I find it stimulating. I'm amazed to see whether it's the Thales of the world, the Airbus, the Samsung, the fact that they are opening up their technology or opening up their strategy as to what they want to do. And I guess you know, one could, could conclude at the end that you know, it's probably the only way to succeed because the new technology probably will last three months. So if you trend to be proprietary only and focus only on, uh, on sole sourcing, and it's going to be probably difficult for you as a company, as big as you can be, to be effective. So I think we live in a different world. We live in a world of cooperation, right? I mean, there's not only Uber, we share um, uh, vehicles. I mean, everything's now... Uh, I think we're, we're embarking into a revive uh, capitalism, which I would call it uh, the cooperative capitalism or uh, sharing capitalism and whatever words we're going to use. So AI is, is just allowing that to happen. And I'm, I'm, I'm happily 
uh, surprised to see uh, the, 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 the young researchers start up working with a large corporation on joint projects. So uh, I would say that that's probably the, the key ingredient for success. And I think you know, somehow we are able to create that uh, momentum. And to me, the, my, my, my wish and my, my objective is to get this, this fundamental research down to the, um, to the, the operating level of our SMEs. That's a, that's a challenge, but I think you know, we've got the basis to do it. It's, um, it's a fantastic challenge. And I, I think I'm personally and, and, and all of us, we think that um, when we believe in AI and that AI is shaping you know, the businesses, is shaping the industries, and is shaping our society in the future. But it's not the only one that had, or the only event that had uh, an impact on, on, that has an impact on society. Um, sadly, we've seen COVID-19 um, and we've all suffered from it, from it um, in, in, in the past months. Um, and we have to live with COVID-19. Do you think that COVID-19 um, or in the post-COVID-19 world, um, there is going to be a broader adoption of AI or, or that the development of AI is becoming more important. Your views on that? Yeah, I think um, as a minister of economy, uh, my biggest challenge is how to restart the economy, right? Because we were in pause for three, four months. And I think that um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy statement to make this to, to, to state that you know, companies have to reinvent themselves. Some of them, interestingly enough, have to kind of change their whole model. One of the other element that uh, we've seen is that the um, pandemic has highlighted the number of weaknesses in uh, in supply chain in our supply chain in Quebec uh, because we are interdependent on the rest of the world. So I think we, on the first statement I made, I think that you know as we need to promote changes within corporation to adjust to this new world. Um, there's so much data available. I mean, AI is a sometimes overused word. I think to, to get company to focus on which data is relevant to provide them comparative advantage to their competitions uh, is very important. And I think that uh, this is, I think it's gonna be more important now than ever because, I mean, of course, if you go in the, pharmaceutical, the health services industry, maybe there won't be that many changes in construction, engineers. I mean, these companies are back to where they were before. They need AI as well, but they needed AI before the COVID. But other companies in the cultural environment, aerospace, other services, I think there'll be numerous new changes in con consumer behaviors that will require these companies to change their um, go-to-market strategy. Well, that's great to say that. You know, we can be sitting there and you talk about that for a while, but how do you execute that? I think it's all about data. It's all about providing, uh, not providing, but it's all about selecting the right data. And then after with the proper assistance uh, with consultant to figure out you know, how we algorithm these data to, 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 to develop an edge versus competition. So I think supply chain for sure will require uh, more and more AI. And I think that as a, as a, as a policymaker uh, becomes very important for me, uh, very, very important. And then the, the whole strategy of how we allocate our resources, financial resources in the economic ministry uh, is gonna be driven uh, by innovation, 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 in which uh, the whole digital world slash AI will become, I think, even more important. Yep. Very important decisions indeed. Um, and, um, and, and, and good luck on, on, on reviving uh, all the economy uh, as we're trying all around the world. Um, interestingly, the Global AI Index, as I was mentioning earlier, um, has put Canada in fourth place globally. Um, it is impressive um, compared to the size of, of, of Canada, um, though it has got a very developed economy. And um, it's pointed out some very some very important strengths, um, and especially around Montreal, where, uh, yes, and you mentioned education, uh, one of the strengths you've mentioned, um, and, and there has been mentioned also um, uh, the talent pool, um, and there's been mentioned also the government policies, 
um, and the vision on AI and the access to the American market, I suspect. And, and many mention even the quality of life because it does attract, in Montreal and it's a fun town, that does attract um, the young talent. But there's one weakness um, that was quite far behind uh, some of the others. Um, and it seems to be the reliability and the scale of access to infrastructure. Um, may that be internet or supercomputing power or et cetera, an infrastructure that could be in the labs or in the corporates or at the access um, for these companies. Is it something that um, the policy is looking to address? Um, is it, um, and, and is it one of your main policies to focus on the further development of AI ecosystem in the future? No, I thought you're absolutely right. I think this, this is clearly a, um, a weakness we need to correct that uh, so far has not been um, harmful, but uh, could become very, very quickly. And actually, uh, the COVID-19 has uh, exacerbated that situation. And uh, there's four elements that uh, are linked to that point. The first one, which is basic, is uh, internet connection. And um, I mean, I mean you, you, you're from uh, Quebec, so you understand that. But if you look at Canada, I mean, uh, it's such a large country and people are dispersed all over the territory. Well, give you, to give you perspective, when I came into my office uh, two years ago, um, one of my file is to connect the unconnected Quebecers that do not have access to internet. Well, I was surprised because in 2003, the prime minister then said he would connect Quebec in two years. And here I came on 17 years later with 350, 350,000 Quebecers not connected. Not to talk about the probably 500,000 that are badly connected with probably downloads of below uh, 10 megabits, which obviously becomes impossible to zoom yourself or to team yourself. So uh, it is clearly an issue. Uh, that issue has been addressed before COVID, but it's been uh, obviously amplified. The problem has been amplified. And you can imagine 350,000 people not connected in, in Quebec. I think it's about 1.2 million not connected in Canada. So both with the federal government and the Quebec government, we are accelerating that pace. We're working with the telcos. Uh, there were issues to put fiber, there were issues with technology. I think obviously right now with uh, fixed wireless, uh, even satellite uh, where we can probably reduce significantly the latency of uh, the communication. I'm pretty confident. Uh, our, 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 um, our commitment to uh, Quebecers was that in 2022, uh, people would be connected. We may, we may lag a little bit there, but frankly, I think technology has now allowed this, this to happen. So yes, there's an issue we need to address. And clearly that got exacerbated. Um, if you go on a higher level, uh, quantum computing, of course, is something that uh, will become a requirement. It's not yet obviously implemented, but uh, I'm glad to, to say that uh, our government has uh, allocated $100 million on a program in, uh, with the Sherbrooke University to work with large corporations such as IBM, Teledyne, to work on quantum, quantum computing. And we have some, 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 pro, some improvement or some 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 uh, I won't say improvement but some uh, projects going on right now and I was actually uh, in a place you may remember called Bron where Teledyne is a huge uh, facility in which we are looking to put even more money so quantum computing is something we think given the AI kind of foundation that allowed us allow us to be a player uh, realizing that the rest of the world is doing that as well Canada has a, as a as a group called uh, uh, Calcul Canada, and we have the Calcul Quebec, in which we obviously need to uh, to power our uh, our servers because uh, that's going to be short term. Because if we don't do that, at one point, all this 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 uh, these these researchers will lack of capacity. So we are aware of that. I think we are lagging, but not uh, we're not uh, impacting the research programs that are currently in effect, but clearly they require us to, to go fast on increasing the current computer uh, uh, powering before we get to uh, quantum computing. And lastly, uh, I'm proud to say we, we've, we've worked on the, uh, on the 5G network. We created a, uh, a, company, a group called Encore, and we're working with uh, Ontario on this. 
and uh, we've got um, uh, basically a company like Ericsson, uh, Thales, and the Litz at IBM working with us. We have four centers, two in Ontario, two in Quebec, where we have basically uh, 5G antenna. And we're using that in some accelerator or incubator called Santec, which is involved with ETS, one of the engineer firm in the engineering university in, the, in Quebec. And I'm pretty happy to see the progress there. I was there actually a couple of months ago to witness uh, uh, startups working with 5G. So I think these four elements are clearly core to our strategy because you are correct. I mean, if we don't uh, pay attention to this, you know, very quickly you can lag in the total poll in terms of uh, effectiveness of uh, AI implementation, which is obviously the key for us. Yes, very important. Thank you for sharing um, that information, your plans. And, um, and just a final question, Montreal in particular is a thriving AI ecosystem and is recognized internationally uh, for that. Um, and what do you think in your own personal views has been the most important drivers in its success and in your success in establishing Canada as a very important AI hub worldwide? Well, I think the success, I mean, Quebec, we are only 8 million, 8.3 million people. To think that we can do everything ourselves is utopia in, in, all, in all matters, all economic matters. So I think the key is attractiveness. Attractiveness comes from different drivers. Uh, you mentioned them earlier in your uh, opening remarks. Uh, I think Canada, in general, and Quebec as well, uh, we are multicultural. I mean, people are bilingual in, in Quebec. They, they speak English, they speak French. Uh, we are multicultural. Uh, our demography is such that you now we have we have a, a basin of, of immigrants that are, uh, I think, uh, very happy to work within Quebec. It's socially. Uh, rest we have as i said university access university it's fairly uh, low cost multicultural fairly low operating cost uh, wages are higher but when you talk about wages in ai wages and uh, technology i think it's all the same everywhere in the world uh, might be a little bit more expensive but maybe less than the us for example um, i think also the uh, the government has been uh, fairly efficient to provide incentives, whether it's uh, tax credit, whether it's uh, for researchers, you no know, uh, provincial tax holiday for a number of years, uh, for large corporations. I'm involved right now with three projects with AI, with American companies that uh, are looking to, um, not to leave the US, but looking to have a, a second hub and to make their second headquarters, so to speak. And I think Quebec offers a lot of advantage there in terms of uh, government effectiveness, in terms of programs. Uh, so I think it's all about, I mean, this AI world is so complex that I think we need access to different culture. We need access to different uh, resources. And I think the, 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 the primary driver is the attractiveness of Quebec in terms of, you know, we're user-friendly, talent pool, and so forth. And when you bring talent, and Dr. Banjo is a good example, Dr. Banjo has allowed other researchers to come. And I think that you know, the Americans are looking at Quebec as saying it's a, it's, a, it's a fertile ground for investment, it's secured. Uh, so I would say it's all of the above. It's primarily an ecosystem which is uh, open for business and open for uh, uh, outside um, people coming in. And we have ample territory. Uh, we have low cost electricity. And I'll conclude on that. I think that you know, if you look at Quebec um, energy, 99% you know, is. Uh, renewable hydro energy. So it's low cost, it's green. So whether you make aluminum, which at one, one day in the world, one day soon people will pay for green and aluminum. Uh, so I think Quebec offers a lot of that advantage and we are, as you know, nice people. <laughs> Very good conclusion, Monsieur le Ministre. Merci beaucoup. Um, and we wish you the best, uh, the best in developing Montreal as the tech hub um, that it's uh, that it's becoming, and the best also in this uh, in reestablishing our economies in this post-COVID uh, environment. So good luck, good luck to you. And all. I hope good help. And I hope we will work with you guys. And I'm glad to see uh, Franco Fonley yourself in London because London, obviously, you have a, 
a nice place in the world in terms of AI. So I hope we'll be able to establish a bilateral arrangements. Thank you for inviting me. We'll make that link. Thank you. Thank you.